Now what we're gonna do is things related to any individual field. Like let's say for instance, you want a field to not be required or you wanna change the label of it or whatever input is in there by default. Those things we're gonna do right now. So if you take a look at your forms themselves, we can change a lot of things very simply. Do you want this field to be required? Well, just type out required, true or false, right? Obviously with the title, I want it to be required and that's actually the default. So really you don't have to write out whether or not the default is true, you would just say false. Now, of course, you might be wondering, how do I know where the defaults are? Of course, the descriptions on the documentation for the core field arguments will tell you what the defaults are. Um, like required, the default is true. It's in here somewhere. Uh, the next one is changing your label. So if you want the label to not even appear, just make it an empty string. It's a very simple way to do it. Um, and like something like price, you can also set an initial value. So initial equaling to, let's say for instance, 199.99, okay? So that's a simple and easy way to change those three initial arguments to any given one of those fields. If I refresh in here, there we go. It actually shows us for that. So more, more specifically, not necessarily refreshing, but just going back and re-rendering the page. This number is actually in here. So there's absolutely more things that we can do in here as well. Like notice that I don't have any placeholders. Well, and also the description itself is not rendered out as a text area. So let's do the description first. Um, and we'll change this to being a text area by overriding the default widget by putting widget equals to forms dot text area. And that's it. I refresh in there, it gives me a text area. Now you can look up all the various widgets also on the documentation for the forms because there's definitely a lot in there. And you might end up changing things like a text area and perhaps you wanna have even bigger or larger changes to that, that particular input. And we then just put in some parentheses here, attributes equals to another dictionary. So since I'm really overriding a lot of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and separate out some of this so I can more clearly understand what's going on here. First attribute that I might have is class. Like maybe you wanna set a new class name here, new class name or multiple classes, right? Two. Um, you can also set the rows that you'd have on here. So let's say we did a hundred rows. I refresh, hey, that is a big form there, right? Of course, that's probably not likely. Maybe you do something more like 20 and have a bigger text area. And of course, you could do columns as well. Okay, and of course, if I inspect this element here, I see that, hey, I've got the name here. I have the two classes that I added, and then I have an ID. What if I change the ID in here? my dash ID for text area. Refresh in here. Oh, you need to make sure I put a comma at the end of that. So it is a dictionary. I now see that my ID has changed. So any different attributes that you wanna put on there, you absolutely can. And that's a very easy way to do it. Now, you could also do it on the title tag. So we wanted to say that we wanna put a placeholder here. So let's go ahead and do forms dot text input. This is the default widget for the char field. So we would just change that to being attributes equals to placeholder and whatever you want the placeholder to be. So your title. We save that and we refresh in here. What do you know? Your title is showing up. Um, of course, that placeholder, you might also want to have that inside of your text area. So your description and so on. Right, so that is how you override some of the basic things about the form itself. This also changes how the validation works, just slightly, at least for the required, right? So if I try to save it and I type out some of the other ones, um, the description's no longer required, so it's no longer gonna show up. 
where the price and the title are required. So if I get rid of the price, it will tell me to fill out this fill field itself. Uh, and that, of course, is the web browser doing that. So if I did that little hacky thing where I got rid of the required element on here and hit save again, it gives me that same validation. So that's pretty cool, but it's only giving us a little hint of what validation actually is. So this part is, well, we're actually pretty much identical to this product form at this point. The forms themselves aren't any different in the sense that the model form renders out the same sort of stuff in here. The only difference is how the view handles it. That's it. You might remember uh, we just did the form itself and then we just saved that data. This is actually doing roughly that same thing. So now going forward, we can render out um, new types of validation for our forms. So let's go ahead and do that in the next one.